right, so what I just did there, I was not able to do like four months ago, and I'll tell you why. So there's a topic in guitar playing that I feel like does not get talked about nearly enough because it's very, very important, and that's called anchoring. You might have heard what it is, but in case you haven't, so basically anchoring is kind of the act of placing a part of your hand on the guitar, some part of the guitar, in order to give you more stability and control when you're picking. And that can be helpful depending on the person who's doing it. Uh, it works for some people, for other people it doesn't. So one player who's really known for anchoring is a guy named Michelangelo Badio, and he's been around for a long time, since like the 80s or whatever. And he's like one of the most technical guitarists out there. No one would question that. He's extremely good. He's actually known for being like one of the fastest shredders ever. He's so good. Uh, and he anchors. And he's actually talked about how he developed his own technique for anchoring. And I can't really... <laughs> I could try to impersonate it. It looks kind of like that. He's like using the body of the guitar as an anchor. And so he's, he's pressing his fingers like that. And he got really good at doing that. I probably look weird because I don't do it that way, so I don't even really know. But it looks something like that. Um, and he swears by it, and he said he developed it because he wanted to see how far he could take uh, the guitar, just how fast you're able to play. And like I said, no one will question, he, he's extremely technical, extremely fast. <laughs> you know, not like that's the most important part, but it can help. And for him, his style is shredded, and so he needs to be able to play fast. So he's gotten to the point where it seems like he can play basically anything with that technique. Now there's other guitarists, like Jason Richardson comes to mind, and uh, he's a more modern guitarist, and he does not anchor his fingers. And in my opinion, he's just as good as Michelangelo Badio, if not even better. He plays, uh, they call it like floating, because you're not anchoring, so you're kind of floating above you're not actually floating, you're still kind of resting your hand, but that's how they say it. It's very interesting the idea of should you anchor, should you not anchor, is there one technique that's better than the other? And what I can say is that I used to anchor my fingers, and from what I've experienced, I've always felt like I was limited. So there's a lot of players out there, obviously, like Michelangelo Badio, who anchor their fingers, and they apparently have no problem. Um, who knows, maybe they do and they're just not saying it. But for me, I was anchoring my fingers for a long time. I actually always had a problem with speed picking. And I realized that if I just anchored my fingers, I basically, I started out by putting my fingers on the body and then I switched to the, the upper pickup. So I was picking up here. And I realized that I was picking faster and faster. And it was cool because I also felt like I had more control over what I was doing and more stability, which was nice. But for me, at least, and I'm assuming for a lot of other people uh, who haven't sort of mastered anchoring as well as like Michelangelo or something like that, or I'm assuming there's even people who just can't do it just because, I don't know, maybe our hands work differently. I don't even really know. I was able to pick very well on the top like three or four strings. And then when you got any lower than that, and I play a seven string, so I would get even one string lower than six. I couldn't do it. So I couldn't pick really fast down here, and I also couldn't pick really fast like around the bridge area. I would be kind of confined up here because this is where I uh, learned how to anchor my fingers. On the one hand, it sounds kind of cool because it's like, oh, you're getting better and better. But on the other hand, I felt like I was relying too much on it, and it was actually limiting my ability to play anything I wanted anywhere on the guitar. I couldn't really, like I would have to stretch my fingers to get on the lower strings, and that just felt super awkward to me, and I really didn't like it, and I just wasn't as good down here than I was up here. Another thing to consider is, like, for me, I really didn't like the idea that I was relying on a certain body type. That's another thing. If you rely on a, putting your fingers at a specific area of the body, and so it's like you're only able to play the same model of guitar, and, like, any other model of guitar just feels super weird, and you're not able to play as well. And for me, it was more of a psychological thing, because I just didn't want to feel like I was confined to like a certain style of body. I don't want to feel like I had to depend on the physical body of the guitar in order to pick well. So I was watching a Jason Richardson video again, and he was talking about how he does not anchor his fingers. 
and he was talking about the exact technique he uses, which is very, very interesting. And he was talking about how he tells his students if they pick incorrectly as far as he's concerned, if it, it basically, if they don't pick like he does, he tells them that they have to relearn how to pick. And that can be very, very frustrating. And, uh, you know, people don't like to hear that because it kind of feels like you have to learn how to pick all over again. But when I heard that, I was like, you know what? If I can pick like Jason Richardson by picking that way, that I'm gonna friggin' relearn how to pick. I'm going to stop anchoring my fingers. And so it took me like maybe three or four months. I started noticing a real difference like two months in, and then like three or four months in, I finally started to be able to pick normally, like really well. And I was also able to pick on the bottom strings, which is very new for me, the, you know, the seventh and sixth and the fifth string. Before I knew it, I was able to pick even faster even better than I was when I was anchoring my fingers. You have to be really honest with yourself and think about like are you satisfied with how well you can pick, how well you can play, and do you think, is there any area where anchoring your fingers, if you do anchor your fingers, is there any area where it's actually inhibiting your ability to play well? And if the answer is Yes, like there are some things that are uh, inhibiting your playing because of anchoring. There's some things that you want to do that you can't, that it's a kind of more of a challenge. I would say that it's definitely worth putting in the time and effort into relearning how to pick uh, not anchoring. That's the only reason. If, if you're anchoring and everything's going totally well and you're totally satisfied and pleased with your ability and where you're at, then definitely continue to do it. But if there's even like 1% of you that's like, I'm not totally satisfied, then I would definitely encourage you to relearn how to do it, you know, floating above the bridge. And even though it's going to be kind of annoying and it's going to take a while, it's going to be a process, you're going to be so thankful that you did because you're going to feel like, wow, I'm finally free to do all these things that I wanted to do on the guitar as far as picking. But I couldn't because I was limiting. I was limited to a certain way of picking. Even theoretically speaking, if you do not anchor your fingers, you have like free range of motion. You can pick wherever the hell you want, anywhere around here. You can pick anywhere. So it's definitely worth the time and effort. All right. So I hope that helped. See ya.